This video is going to run a little over 21 minutes. We're going to talk a little bit about targeting, and I suggest you go read the targeting memo on the website. But targeting means that a player takes aim at an opponent for purposes of attacking with an apparent intent that goes beyond making a legal tackle or a legal block or playing the ball. And we're going to follow the NCAA rule as to what targeting is. The only difference is we're not going to disqualify a player for targeting. So um, if it is deemed flagrant by the on-field official, the targeting shot, we can still, within our discretion, disqualify the player. But as a general rule, we're not going to follow the NCAA strict interpretation that if there is a target, we must disqualify the player. So the on-field official may, in his discretion, disqualify the player if he determines the targeting foul was flagrant. And in any event, any targeting calls on the field or that are not called and we catch on review during the evaluations, the player may be fined or disciplined by the league office as is appropriate. So we're going to go into the rule and uh, let's spend the next 20 minutes looking at some plays and learning a little bit about targeting. And basically it's technique, especially for the coaches. you got to teach proper tackling technique. Get the head out of the Get the head out of the way. All right, let's take a look at the video. As we look at the elements of targeting, you're going to see we have two flavors, as we know, 913, which is targeting with the crown of the helmet. There are two components that Replay would have to review, as you can see here, and both of those components would have to be confirmed. Same thing on 914, targeting a defenseless player. We have three components, as you can see, and all three of these components must be confirmed for the player to be disqualified. And as we talk about the indicators of targeting, uh, I, I want to highlight a couple of words here. So targeting means that a player takes aim at an opponent for purposes of attacking, and that's the key word here, attacking with forcible contact that goes beyond making a legal tackle, legal block, or playing the ball. Targeting indicators are listed here, but they're not limited to only these. But these are the ones that we'll evaluate most of the time. Clearly a launch, we're pretty familiar there. Um, the second, a crouch followed by an upward and forward thrust to attack. And if you see the word attack in each of these, leading with the helmet, shoulder, forearm, fist, or hand, elbow to attack with forcible contact, and simply lowering the head before attacking by initiating forcible contact with the crown of the helmet are all indicators. So let's look at some plays. So this first play we're going to look at, um, you're going to see a hit by a defensive back on a runner. So clearly this is not a 914 situation, but what you're going to see is the tackler lowers his head and then makes forcible contact with the crown of the helmet. So if you're in the replay booth, you're looking at this, does the player take aim at the opponent attacking with forcible contact with the crown of the helmet? Yes. Is there an indicator? Yes. Lowering the head uh, and leading with the head, clearly an indicator. So both of the components are here, so we would confirm this call. Now, this next play is a great illustration of the rule change. So here is a situation where we get a flag on the field, for a targeting of a defenseless player. Now, a point of note here is that we are not going to change how we're calling on the field. When in question, it's a foul. But what we're going to see from the video here, clearly the contact is against a defenseless opponent, so we have that. Uh, and there is forcible contact to the head or neck area, so we have that. But the question is, is there an indicator? And as you can see, this player is really playing the ball. He, there's no indicator here. He's just running through the opponent, playing the ball, and their helmets hit. So here is one. You could not confirm an indicator, so we would overturn this call based on this new rule. Now this next play, again, here's a hit on a defenseless receiver. So as replay goes in to look at it, uh, first, do we have a defenseless player? No question about that. Second, is there an indicator? Clearly, uh, th this is as big an indicator. I mean, it's a launch, but when you go in and look, is there forcible contact into the head or neck area? And I think you would clearly agree 
that you could not confirm that. In fact, there really isn't forcible contact in the head or neck. And so here would be a play that we would overturn uh, and not have a targeting foul. Now, this next play we're going to look at is a 913 or crown of the helmet hit. And important to note that helmets don't have to collide for targeting. And here's a situation where uh, there's a call on the field for targeting with the crown of the helmet. And if you're replay, you go in and look. Is there forcible contact with the crown of the helmet? No question. It goes right into the chest of the defenseless player. He's a, he's a passer. But it's a crown of the helmet hit. And the indicator is simply lowering the head to attack the opponent. So this would be one that replay would confirm as a targeting foul. And then you're going to see the runner here. You know, you've got a strong case for targeting there. Lowering the helmet and hitting with the crown of the helmet, you know, that was not looked at, but I think it was worth a look. And, and I, I think really you are looking at targeting there. It is forcible and it is crown of the helmet and he leads with the crown. So I do think that's the indicator that you have. Targeting here, Baylor, Oklahoma State called on the field targeting. Automatic review, and, and the replay official confirmed that it was targeting. So the receiver is in a defenseless posture. The defender is going to lead with the helmet attack, initiate forcible contact to the head neck area, also initiates contact with the crown. So you have a, uh, a violation of both rules. 913 is, is crown to any opponent, any part of the opponent's body, and 914 would be attacking to the head neck area of a defenseless opponent. So this is a foul for targeting. Um, targeting, again, initiated by the booth. This is like the clowny play, for those of you that remember, that before wasn't a foul. It is now. I mean, oh, the timing is like, okay, this is impossible. But it is. You're, you're, you're talking about a runner here, so you're dealing with the crown, you're dealing with attacking, and you're dealing with leading with the helmet. You've got the indicators there. Nothing was called on the field. I get it. That's like a bang, bang thing. And you go, whoa, and you take a deep breath. But replay put it on, and they rightly put it on because it has the, it has the, uh, the, what you need for targeting in terms of the indicators. Kevin Marr, okay, they call targeting. Okay, the targeting this play. Would you watch the USC player? Number two. I mean, what? Now, this is not directed at Kevin Maher. It's behind Kevin Maher. But would somebody, your, your teammate just got ejected. I'm, I'm like, what? Can you help me with that? Um, targeting. Now, this is targeting, and there's no question that it's targeting. Now, it's targeting under the rule of a defenseless player. Um, it, it's, this, is, this is a player going to the ground. Knee is on the ground, and then it's a shoulder to the head. Hey, look at the league. The NCAA wants this out of, out, of the, out of the game, period. And let's remember that the rule book says that, you know, they list the limit, the deep, the, the uh, defenseless players, but it also says that that's not all inclusive. And this player's defenseless. He's going toward the ground. So even if the knee isn't on the ground yet, this is not a play that we want in the game. It was correctly called. Iowa State, West Virginia, let's talk about targeting. And you're going to have a catch and a run. So we have a runner. So the only type of targeting we can have is 913, which would be with the crown of the helmet. And, and I want you to look at this replay. And this is really the hit that the rule is trying to get out of the game. Watch the defender. And he's going to lower his head. He's going to attack with the crown of the helmet. It's, it's to the head and neck area, but it could be any part of the opponent's body. And that is targeting. Called on the field and properly confirmed in replay. And just look at the aftermath. I mean, 24 looks like he is shaken up. His own teammate, number four, takes the brunt of the hit. He was down for a little bit. And again, no attempt to wrap, no attempt to make a, a conventional tackle. And that's the type of hit the rule is designed to get out of the game. Here we have a classic case of a targeting foul for the crown of the helmet, a violation of Rule 913. You have all you need to call this a targeting foul. The player lowers his head before attacking by initiating forcible contact with the crown of the helmet, and that's one of the indicators of targeting. You can also see why this rule is in place, because the player who gets hurt 
is the player who actually delivers the targeting blow. Now, Rule 913 is there to protect both players, but principally the player who delivers the blow. And you can see that this player gets hurt, he gets a stinger, and so he is hurt because of the blow he delivered in this targeting foul. So we correctly have a flag on this play, and it goes to review as all targeting fouls do, and the replay official overturns the call. Now this is an incorrect overturn. This is a targeting foul, a good call by the official on the field. It should not have been overturned by replay, and the player should have been disqualified from the game. Start with targeting SMU Navy. Call on the field was targeting, and you can see at full speed on the field why the official would call that targeting. The hit is high. You have a defenseless player, and uh, and so it's automatically reviewed, and then replay is going to overturn the targeting call. Good decision by replay because you're going to see, although the, the receiver is defenseless, the defender is going to lead with the shoulder to the body and not attack to the head neck area. So that is not targeting. Remember, they reofficiate the play, and if they can't confirm all elements of targeting, then the call on the field will be overturned. Here, you can certainly confirm that there was no targeting and that the shoulder to the body was the reason for the overturn. Purdue, Wisconsin, good legal hit. No call on the field, and, and replay did not stop this to, to look for potential targeting. And we always we talk about defenseless players. You're going to lean toward making the receiver defenseless. So even though here he does appear to complete the catch, he doesn't have time to protect himself. He turns, and immediately he's contacted. So he is defenseless. So now you're looking for either attacking with the crown of the helmet, which would apply to any player, or attacking to the head or neck area, which applies to a defenseless player. So here, indication of not targeting the player's head, the defender, his head is up, the head is to the side, leading with the shoulder to the body. Good, hard, legal hit, not targeting. Illinois, Iowa, and you'll see the quarterback roll out. He's going to throw, and then he's going to get hit well after the pass is released. No call on the field. It was stopped to look for potential targeting, and targeting was not added. And certainly here, at a very minimum, we have rough in the passer. This is a personal foul, clearly late. The defender has an opportunity to let up. And now we talk about targeting, and I think the real issue here is, is the defender attempting to avoid the contact or is he attacking to the head neck area? The replay official felt that he could not confirm all elements of targeting and therefore did not add the foul. I certainly believe that if the foul had been added, it would have been fully supported. As you can see, that forcible contact to the head neck area, the defender has an opportunity to avoid that contact continues to follow through, drops the head, and there is that forcible contact. So again, if they can't confirm all elements, then they can't create the foul in replay. But I think that call, had it been made either on the field or in replay, would have been supported. Start with targeting, pretty straightforward. Just a good reminder of the rule. You have two types, 913, which is lowering the head and attacking with the crown of the helmet to any part of any opponent's body. And then 914, which is... There's an indicator and then attacking to the head neck area of a defenseless player. This is 914. You have a receiver who's attempting to catch a pass, is in a defenseless posture. The defender is going to lead with the helmet and the shoulder, attack with forcible contact to the head neck area. And that is targeting, properly called on the field, and confirmed in replay. Two good examples of calls that are made on the field that are overturned after review and then this is a high hit on the quarterback the quarterback is in a defenseless posture so you can see why the call is made but when it goes to review you really you have a defender with the head up the contact is to the shoulder not to the head neck area there's no indicator there's no forcible contact to the head neck area and uh, and so there is no targeting and properly picked up in replay here, you're going to have a hit on the receiver across the middle. Again, in a defenseless posture, you're looking for an indicator. Does the defender launch? Does he lower the head? Does he lead with the head or the shoulder or forearm to attack with forcible contact to the head neck area? And here you see the head up. The head up is typically a good indication that we don't have a foul. Head up, bringing the arms through to wrap. You can have forcible contact to the head neck area of a defenseless player. That's not targeting. This is a great example of it. Head is up. He's going to initiate contact with the forearm and shoulder to the body of the receiver. And, uh, and this is properly overturned in replay. 
I want you to watch number one here after he pitches the ball back to the quarterback, and he's going to take a pretty big hit. No call on the field for targeting, and replay is going to initiate a review to look for potential targeting. And this is where the communication between the replay official and the TV truck is really, really important. And every time there's a replay review, the, TV, the replay official should call the truck and let you know exactly what they're looking for. And when they're looking for targeting, typically it's going to be around the football. It's going to be the passer, the receiver, like the previous plays we just looked at. There are going to be times where it's a little bit harder to locate, blindside blocks, right? Those are typically going to happen in the return game, change, change of direction plays. Those, are, those, those could happen anywhere on the field. They don't necessarily have to happen around the football. This, while it involves the football, it's a little bit unusual because you have a flea, fl flea flicker. The player who, who throws a pass is considered defenseless, whether that pass is forward or backward. You can see, number one, he has no chance to protect himself from that contact. And so they looked at it. Ultimately, they determined that it was not targeting or they couldn't confirm all the elements of targeting. And this is certainly close because you can make a case that he is attacking to the head neck area and that he's lowering the head and potentially making contact with the crown. If they can't confirm all elements, they, they're not going to create the foul. Again, close, but uh, they ultimately felt it wasn't enough. But the bigger point here is that the player that, that throws a backward pass is also protected from uh, under the defenseless player protections. Let's talk targeting, ruling on the field was targeting for a hit on a defenseless player. The receiver is in a defenseless passer. You have two defenders converging. But watch, he is in a defenseless posture, but both players going, are going to lead with the shoulder. You'll see 27 is going to turn his head to the side, shoulder to the body. Number two has his head up. Neither player is lowering the head. Neither player is attacking to the head neck area. That is a legal hit, went to review, and properly overturned in replay. Another targeting play here, and this is why we have this rule. We're still seeing these types of hits, and these are the hits we want out of the game. Watch the hit on the passer. This player makes no attempt to wrap. He lowers the head and just hits the quarterback, attacks with the crown of the helmet to the head neck area. That is targeting, and that's, again, the hit we want out of the game, and that's why the penalty is so severe. That's why it's an ejection, and if it happens in the second half, you're going to miss the first half of the, uh, of the next game. Here we have a missed targeting shot right in front of the wing on the back judge's key. We have a defenseless opponent. Why? Because he is the recipient of a blindside block. That is a category of a defenseless opponent. And he is attacked by the defender. And the rule states, no player shall target and make forcible contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless opponent. This is a defenseless opponent because he, he is the recipient of a blindside block. And right there you can see he's going to lower his head and attack the head or neck area. Boom, and blows him up. That is a clear targeting foul that we've got to have. When we discuss targeting, there's two types, 913 and 914. The easy way to differentiate is 913 is basically spearing. No player shall target and make forcible contact against an opponent with the top of his helmet, the crown of his helmet. And, of course, you need an indicator of targeting. When in question, it is a foul. Remember, for 913, a player does not have to be defenseless. You just can't attack an opponent with the crown of your helmet. The player does not have to be defense, defenseless. 914, that's another form of targeting. You can't contact the head or neck area of a defenseless opponent with your helmet, forearm, hand, fist, elbow, or shoulder. And you need the indicator also. So that's attacking the head or neck area of a defenseless opponent. So which two do we have here? Well, first of all, and we're going to see a really good shot from the end zone. First off, forward progress has been stopped right there, and the play should have been shut down. So... When you're going big, when the crew's going to blow it, as they did on this play, they went big. Just so many issues on this play. So the first one was, of course, the forward progress was clearly stopped, and the play should have been ruled dead. Now here we're going to see an incidence of 9-1-3 targeting. Number 9 here, the runner, 
He's not defenseless. However, he may not be subject to forcible contact by an opponent with the crown of the helmet. So what happens here? He's not defenseless, but boom, right there. That, we used to call that spearing. This is 913 targeting. Both of them are putting their hands down. That's on the defender. He cannot lower. He doesn't, he doesn't see what he's hitting. He just puts his head down and attacks with the crown of his helmet. That is a foul. That is a foul. That is a foul. Now, let's look at part two here. Is this 914? We're going to see that big guy with his 20-yard head start. Where is he at? Now, here, Ford Progress has stopped. The play should have been blown dead right now. He's driven back two or three yards. Here he comes. The question is, is, it a, is he targeting a defenseless player? Well, if we blew this play dead, yes. The runner would be defenseless. The, the play is over. Whether he attacks him with the crown of the helmet here or not, or whether he hits the head or neck area, looks like he does, and he launched. We've got the indicator. This is a foul. But in any event, if we cannot put this under any of the aspects of targeting, this is unnecessary roughness. When we have a player such as this, realizes he's not making a football play. He just wants to come out and annihilate somebody. This, too, is a foul that we've got to get. So just know the differences. 913, 914, one you're just attacking with the crown of your helmet, as we did on the runner here. The defender's coming in. He has no idea what he's hitting. He just puts his head down and attacks with the crown of his helmet. That is a foul. Forward progress has been stopped. And our big guy coming in at the end, whether we can put, put that into 913 or 914, I'm not sure whether he attacks with the crown or not. Perhaps, perhaps, but we can't tell. But the player himself knows this is not a football play. He's just coming in to annihilate somebody. Not a football play. Worst case, unnecessary roughness. That'll wrap up our review for targeting. Officials and coaches, just remember, contrary to the NCAA rule, we will not have automatic disqualifications for targeting fouls called on the field. If the official deems the targeting foul flagrant, they do have the discretion to disqualify the player for that game. Also, replay will not create or confirm a targeting foul in the IFL. Any of that confirmation will come after the game, after review by the league office, and appropriate discipline may be issued, fines and or suspensions, depending on upon how bad the targeting shot was. Just keep that in mind. That's our differences from the NCAA. Our rosters are too short, so we're not going to be disqualifying players as they do in the NCAA unless, in the discretion of the covering official, it is deemed egregious. And uh, any questions, you know how to get a hold of me. And until then, enjoy, and I look forward to making the next video. I'll talk to you soon.